Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Hilltop for continuing action in the Riverside Meat Company Tip-Off Classic here at Harrison County High School. We've already had four games played, and they're in the books. In our opener back at noon, Newport knocked off Augusta. In the second game, the Paris girls all over the Holmes Bull Lady Bulldogs, 72-11. That was followed by Harrison County's Phillies game against Erlanger Lloyd, a game that was won by the Juggernauts, 62-37. And in the game just completed, an exciting one. Bracken County knocks off Central Harden 66 to 54. And to finish out today, coming up in just a few minutes, the Harrison County Thoroughbreds taking on the Jaguars of East Jesmond. Well, after going just four and 26 last season, East Jesmond returns its top four scores, and the Jags are hoping to turn things around this season. It's been a rough start for them, however, having said that, with losses to Scott County and Somerset at home this week. Meanwhile, the Breds have won two exciting games here on the hilltop to start the season, including last night's 67-64 victory over Central Harden. Right now, both teams are out on the floor going through their pregame paces. You're listening to the pregame show brought to you by Cynthia Anna Hardy's. We'll take a break right now, come back and take a closer look at both the Breds and the Jaguars, you're listening to Harrison County Basketball on WCYN Sports. All righty, back here at the Hilltop, Harrison County and East Jesmond are still the same. Okay. Harrison County and East Jesmond about to take each other on here in about 16 minutes or so. So we said this is a one-day classic sponsored by Riverview Meat Company. Riverview Meat Company also offers local pasture-raised, hormone-free beef, pork, and lamb for sale. Are you looking for quality locally sourced meat? then Riverview Meat Company has what you're looking for. You can purchase their products at 312 West Pearl Street in Cynthiana, Stepping Stone Farm in Paris, and 68 West Farm Market in Carlisle. You can check out their Facebook page and website for holiday specialty cuts and gift boxes. Don't forget, Riverview Meat Company gift certificates make the perfect Christmas gift. Riverview Meat Company was formed to meet the livestock processing needs of local farmers. Riverview Meat Company offers both USDA inspected and non-USDA inspected processing of beef, pork, and lamb. You don't have to travel hours for this service anymore. Give Summer a call at 859-234-4121 to schedule your appointment. From processing to retail, Riverview Meat Company cares about its customers. They can't wait to serve all of your processing needs. We really do appreciate Riverview Meat Company for sponsoring this tip-off classic here on the Hilltop today where we've had five games. Anyway, back to the participants in our final game, Harrison County and East Jesmond. East Jesmond coached by Matthew Tuning, who is now in his third year as the head coach of the Jaguars. As we mentioned before, they've had a couple of tough losses to begin the season at home. On Tuesday, they lost down in Nicholasville to a good Scott County squad, 86-59. to And then last night, they lost at home to Somerset, 75 to 59. They're led in scoring this year by senior Jacob Lockett, who's averaging 16 and a half points per game. He is the only Jaguar, however, who is averaging in double figures. One thing for sure, with the several players coming back from last year, this East Jesmond squad should be more competitive in the 12th region than they were last year. 
Meanwhile, Harrison County had a great win last night, maybe even greater than the Rao win earlier in the week as they kept Central hard at arm's length in a 67 to 64 win here last night. Senior J.D. Kendall scored a career high 26 points and had really a very nice complete game for J.D. in that he stayed beyond the perimeter at times and made three three-pointers. He also worked inside, got several rebounds, and also got several easy buckets around the basket. And that's just the kind of complete game we need from J.D. all the time. He also played solid defense as well. The Reds were in that game last night, led by as many as 10 points on a couple of occasions, but the Bruins just would not go away. They just kept on fighting, made things interesting. In fact, truth be told, if they'd had more than a couple of seconds to get off a last second shot, they could have packed, basically tied the game, but uh, there was just not enough time for them to get a missed free throw, get it to somebody who could shoot, and get a shot off that was decent all within a couple of seconds. It just wasn't meant to be. Central Harden Jr. Brett Decker, oh my gosh. What a performance by Decker last night. Looked like the second coming of Chris Lofton as he poured in 36 points, including 10 three-pointers. And I swear of those 10 three-pointers that he made, not a single one caught any of the iron. They just went straight through the net. We had guys with hands in his face. He was shooting off balance. There's no way that most of those shots should have gone in. We were all over him, but still Decker, an exceptional shooter, able to make those 10 threes on his way to a team high 36 points. The Brez, meanwhile, got another solid effort from junior Will Furnish, who finished with a career best 16 points. So as with Will getting better and better with each passing game and stronger and more confident, that just makes this Harrison County team even better, especially when the coaching staff allows Will to go beyond the perimeter or the top of the key or somewhere where he can bring the big man from the other team away from the basket. So uh, Will continues to flourish. Elijah Harris, just like we talked about with Coach Brooks earlier this season, he continues to uh, build upon the improvement he made during the summer program and is a very good ball handler, as is Mason Smiley. Mason came in there and played exceptional defense against the Central Harden Bruins as well. and has proven that he is a guy that you can keep out there just about the entire 30 min 32 minutes. He does not seem like he ever slows down. And of course, it goes without saying Caden Custard. Caden is the straw that stirs the drink. He's the man that makes things happen for this team. Whenever we're in trouble, I think I'm not alone in being one who thinks that if we're in trouble or need a shot, then we de definitely need for Caden to have a shot at the ball and a chance to either score or, if not score, at least get the ball to somebody who can. But in any case, Custard having a very good year. And uh, you got to remember something. And we talked about that this morning at Roundtable with uh, assistant coach Andrew Case. Caden is in his fourth year as a starter at the point guard position. If you'll remember when he was in eighth grade, he started several games as our point guard and throughout his freshman and sophomore and now junior season, that makes a big difference. And you can tell that difference and not to disparage anybody from Ryle or Central Harden. They just didn't have as experienced a guys as what we have with Caden out there. And that makes such a big difference in close games like what we've had. We've been there, done that. This team has been there, done that in the close games, and not just in basketball, but throughout the baseball season as well. Yeah, we had those two horrible losses at the end of the baseball season, but I think that those two losses may do more for all our sports teams that involve the guys that play baseball than anything else because nobody wants to go through that again, that's for sure. Well, right now, both teams are out on the floor going through their pregame warm-ups. We'll invite you to stay tuned as we'll take a break and then come back and look at the starting fives for both Harrison County and East Jesmond. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCY and Sports.
All righty, back here at the Hilltop. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. First for East Jesmond, 0-2 on the year, coached by Matthew Tuning. At a guard, a 5'8 senior, number three, Hayden Frazier. Frazier averaging five points per game this year. Another guard is Mayo Jones. He wears the number five. He's a 5'10 sophomore and is averaging nine points a contest. The third guard is manned by Miles Radford. Radford, a 5'9 sophomore who wears the number 12. He's averaging eight points a game. And at the other guard, James Burbage, 5'9 sophomore who wears the number four. He has yet to score this year. The forward position is manned by a 6'2 sophomore, number 23, Keelan Daniel. Daniel averaging seven points a game. So once again, for the Jaguars, it'll be Frazier, Jones, Radford, Burbage, and Daniel. East Jesmond on the air averaging 59 points per game on offense. On defense, though, giving up a rather healthy 80 and a half points per game. Now for the Harrison County Thoroughbreds, 2-0 on the year, coached by Terrence Brooks. And a guard, a six-foot junior, number one, Caden Custard. Custard co-leader on the team and points scored at 17 per game. Another guard, <clears throat> as we mentioned before, Mason Smiley. He wears the number three. He's a 5'8 junior, averaging five and a half points a contest. The third guard is Elijah Harris, a 5'5 junior who wears the number 13. He's averaging four points a game. At the forward, J.D. Kendall. Wears the number 21, he's a 6'5 senior and is averaging a co-leading point per game total on the year of 17 per game. And in the middle, a 6'11 inch junior, number 44, Will Furnish. Furnish averaging 14 and a half points per game. So once again for the Reds, it'll be Custard, Smiley, Harris, Kendall, and Furnish. Offensively, Harrison County averaging 60 and a half points per game on offense. On defense, giving up 58 and a half points per game there. So there's your look at the starting quintets for the game coming up here in about seven minutes. And while we have this opportunity, let's take it back to the station to Bruce Templeton from Unity Christian Church with tonight's pregame prayer. Already back here at the Hilltop, Harrison County and East Jesmond meeting for just the second time in boys basketball history. Kind of odd, not that far away, but tonight just the second time we played them. The other time came back in February of 2001 when we defeated or took on East Jesmond at the uh, Kentucky Bank Invitational in Scott County High School. That game was won by the Jaguars 69-51, to so a chance for... A little redemption some 21 years later from that first time that we got together with East Jesmond. Well, I think that we'll, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at what else is going on across the hilltop as far as other winter sports are concerned. Of course, today the wrestling team hosted the Harrison County Invitational Wrestling Tournament. Next Saturday, our wrestling team will be in action in the capital city when they go and participate in the Franklin County Duel. So best of luck to Coach Ashbrook as far as that is concerned. As far as the Thoroughbreds are concerned, they'll take several days off over the next week to work on some things in practice. The Reds' next game will be next Friday when we'll make the trip up 27 north to Bishop Rosser High School. And then on Saturday, the Reds will be participating in the ninth region versus 10th region challenge which is being played over at Bracken County. The Thoroughbreds will be taking on Boone County 9th region representative. That game will start at 6 o'clock so a week from today 6 o'clock 
at Brocken County, the ninth versus 10th region challenge, Harrison County versus Boone County. Meanwhile, the Phillies, who earlier today dropped the 62 to 37 decision to Lloyd Memorial, they will also be taking several straight days off. They'll be back in action here on the Hilltop next Friday as they'll take on the Lady Eagles of Covenant Scott High School. And on Saturday, a week from today, the Phillies will host the Ludlow Lady Panthers. That will be a JV varsity doubleheader. The JV game a week from tomorrow will take place at 3 with the varsity game of the Phillies versus Ludlow taking place at around 4.30. So make plans now to attend as many of those games as I've mentioned and uh, support your Harrison County High School student athletes because uh, they work hard and deserve all of your attention. Well, right now, both teams are wrapping up their pregame warm-ups. We'll invite you to stay tuned as we'll come back and uh, take a look at some other stuff about Harrison County and East Jesmond. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports. Alrighty, back here at the Hilltop, the tip-off classic brought to you by Riverview Meat Company. Appreciate their sponsorship of today's event. And we've had uh, five, well, of the five, of the four games we've played already, three were good. The only dog was when uh, Paris beat Holmes in girls basketball action 72-11. Other than that, uh, all the games have been fairly close and well played. Newport defeated Augusta to start the day off. That was followed by that Paris win over Holmes in girls basketball. Then the Phillies played well for three quarters. In fact, going into the fourth quarter, trailed by just five before eventually losing by 25, 62 to 37. But uh, still a good showing by our girls. And then the 66 to 54 win by Bracken County over Central Harden, sending the boys from down in Cecilia back into the fifth region, thinking that the 10th region <coughs> must be pretty good as we defeated them twice. Harrison County knocking off the Bruins on Friday and then on Saturday it was Bracken County who knocked off the guys from down in Cecilia 66 to 54 so uh, even with that having said that and even watching today don't be surprised <clears throat> you have come Sweet 16 time in Rupp Arena one of the teams you see out there is Central Harden because they do have some weapons. They've got good size well coached and plus even though he was a little bit off today a premier shooter in brett decker who uh just got bodied up a little bit too much for his liking i think and uh just did not have a good game as far as his standards are concerned so there you have it all right they're about to uh, introduce the starting fives for both teams so we'll take a break and then come back for the tip-off of tonight's game between harrison county and east jesmond you're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports.
All righty, back here at the Hilltop, the starting quintet for East Jesmin has just been introduced. Now Harrison County starting five will also be introduced in front of a decent, yeah, decent crowd for today's game. Stable about three fourths full. So uh, student section very loud and rowdy last night in that win over Central Harden. Uh, I expect nothing less tonight as uh, they may sometimes be small in number, but uh, very vocal. So uh, should be a great game tonight between Harrison County 2-0 and, and East Jesmond 0 and 2. Hopefully Harrison County can go ahead and pick up their third win of the season in just the first week heading into several days of practice. So Harrison County starting five has been introduced and now we're getting close to being ready to go. Mark down some notes so I'll remember to note them if they become notable. All right, Will Furnish Jumping Center for Harrison County across the midcourt stripe. Keelan Daniel for East Jesmond as we're about to get the game underway. Tap controlled by Custard. Tries a pass, knocked away. Harris picks it up, gets it back to Custard inside a triple team. Fans it back out to Kendall. To the right side to Smiley for three. Good! That's a good way to start things off. Mason Smiley burying a tray off the assist from J.D. Kendall. Harrison County up three to nothing within the first few seconds. In the front court on the right side, Jones. Jones has his pocket picked by Custard. Custard chases down the loose ball, now has to pick it up, and he gets the ball to Smiley. Smiley in the front court to the top of the key to Custard. Right side, Kendall for three, no good. Rebound, however, is brought in by Elijah Harris. In the corner on the far side, Smiley tries another three. This one is no good. Coming down with the rebound will be Radford of the Jaguars. In the corner with the basketball, Daniel. He'll try a three. Rattles out. Rebound batted four. And finally, Custard will come away with it for Harrison County. In the front court, Custard gets the ball down to the block to Smiley, who lays it up and in. Good pass that time by Caden Custard. Mason Smiley picks up his second basket of the early part of this game to put his team ahead 5-0. In the front court with the basketball, Jones. Jones backs up near the timeline to set the offense. Now races into the paint to the block shot, partially blocked by Furnish. Nope, they're going to say it was not touched by Furnish at all. But now I think that uh, the outside official is going to change everybody's mind. So East Jesmond will get possession of the ball. I thought that Will got a piece of that. From his own baseline, Jones to trigger the inbounds pass. Jones in the corner, a three fired up by Daniel. Good. Keelan Daniel gets his team on the scoreboard with the long three, which brings his team back to within two at five to three. Six eighteen left to go in the first quarter. Out top of the basketball, Custard, right side Harris. In the corner, he'll find Kendall. Skip pass to the far side to Smiley for a three-pointer. This time it's off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound hauled in by Lockett. In the front court on the right side, Jones gets to the basket, but before he can go there, he's going to be fouled. Non-shooting foul. Fouls on Custard, that'll be Caden's first personal foul. From his own baseline, Jones to trigger the inbounds pass. Jones out top now to Radford. Radford in the corner. Shot put up, no good. Rebound pulled in by J.D. Kendall. Into the front court with the basketball. Smiley in the corner finds Harris. Harris back on the wing to Smiley. Back in front of the bench for East Jesmond to Harris. Back up top to Smiley. Back to Harris on the right side. Lobs it inside for a furnish ball. Knocked away. And the loose ball is going to be picked up by Frazier. Frazier in the front court. Measures Smiley. Goes to the block. Puts up a shot over Furnish, which is no good. Rebound pulled in by Custard. Caden tries to go coast to coast, but before he can get to the basket, he's going to be fouled by Radford. That'll be Radford's first personal foul. Just a common foul, they're going to say. From his own baseline, Smiley, the trigger of the inbounds pass. His team leading 5-3, to 5.23 left to go in the first quarter. Smiley lobs the ball to the top of the key to Kendall for three. Yes! Another Canuck three-pointer, this time by J.D. Kendall off the assist from Smiley, 
as Harrison County's lead goes back out to five at eight to three. And now we're gonna have a steal by Smiley. Smiley puts up a shot that's gonna be nowhere close and goes out of bounds. Harrison County gives the ball back. We'll remind everyone that it may be difficult to understand everything your teenager is saying, but with Dustin and Amy at Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, at least it's easy to get a great insurance. Call them at 859-234-4514. Keelan Daniel buries another three, and that gets his team back to within two again at eight to six. And now we're going to have a foul as Furnish was fed the ball down low. That foul on the same player, Daniel. And that'll put Furnish at the line for a couple of free throws. Will on the year, shooting 67% from the line. First one's on the way and good. Edges Harrison County's lead out to nine to six. As we said, 444 left here in the first quarter. Second free throw is also good by Will. Harrison County leading by four, 10 to six. With the basketball, Radford. Between the legs dribble being guarded in the backcourt by Harris. Crosses the midcourt stripe, moves to the paint, dumps it down low, a perfect pass to Keelan Daniel who lays it up and in. Daniel with eight points now, gets his team back to within two at 10 to eight. 424 left to go in the first quarter now as Furnish has fed the ball, he's gonna be fouled. And that will be on Daniel. So Daniel just picked up his second personal foul. Coming in the game, Mikhail Hall for East Jesmond. Mikhail Hall, a 6'3 junior, averaging two and a half points a game. From his own baseline, Smiley gets it in the corner to Custard. Custard drives, gets it to Furnish, who lays it up and in. Furnish with four, give the assist to Custard as Harrison County extends its lead to 12 to eight on that layup. As we approach the midway point of the first quarter, Harrison leading 12 to eight. With the basketball, Radford out top of three, fired up, no good by Mayo Jones. And with the rebound is J.D. Kendall. He'll hand the ball off to Smiley. <coughs> Smiley in between the circles, pass to the right side, long range to Harris, in the corner finds Kendall. Fires a three, no good, short. Rebound on the offside, picked up by Mayo Jones. And here come the Jaguars. Jones in the paint, a floater from 10 is good. Actually, that was Radford. Miles Radford with the shot on the runner. And it's now 12 to 10. Harrison County's lead back down to two. In the paint, a hook shot try by Furnish is no good, but it's because he's fouled. Foul's gonna be assessed to Frazier. That'll be Hayden Frazier's first. So Furnish back to the line where he just did make a couple a minute ago or so. Like a good neighbor, Joe Cochran with State Farm is there. Get a new home or auto quote with Joe by calling 859-234-3813. Joe always supports the Breds and the Phillies. The first free throw by Furnish is no good, but he'll have another try at it right here. At the 329 mark of the first quarter, free throw is good. Harrison County now up by three. 13 to 10. Into the front court with the basketball come the Jaguars. Going to the basket and having his shot blocked is Radford. Ball was blocked out of bounds, so East Jasmine will maintain possession. Radford 5-9, Will 6-11. It wasn't going to work. With the basketball, Hall gets the ball to Jones. Jones fires an NBA three, short. Long rebound comes all the way out to Caden Custard and as... We come up the floor, Custard, I think, came down awkwardly on a ankle, so he'll come out. Kaysen Wright checks in. Wright, a six-foot junior who has yet to score this year. So they'll check on Caden. He might have just twisted an ankle. Across the timeline with the basketball comes Harris to the right side to Smiley. Harrison up by three, three minutes left to go in the first quarter. Wright with the basketball to Harris. Right side, Smiley inside the arc. Back up top to Harris to the left side to Wright. Kaysen, skip pass to the near side, knocked away and stolen by Radford. Radford will bring the ball into the front court himself, his team down by three. He'll get the ball to Jones. In the corner, a three by Lockett is short, and Will Furnish skies to get the rebound there, his first rebound of the night. Into the front court comes Kendall. Kendall to the left side to Smiley. Smiley in the paint, a floater from 10 is going to drop, drop, drop off. Rebound on the floor is picked up 
by Jones. Quickly the other way we come. And now another block by, this time by Kendall, of a shot by Jones. Jones got his own rebound, however. And now a three fired up by Lockett is no good. Long rebound picked up by Jones again. You'll get the ball to Lockett, who has a shot blocked by Refurnish. Well, it's a blockathon down low for Harrison County. Checking in for the first time for Harrison, Garrett Wilson. Wilson, a 6'3 junior, averaging two and a half points a game. Also coming back in will be Custard. He'll come in for Elijah Harris. From his own baseline to trigger the inbounds pass near the corner will be Jones. Gets the ball into the hands of Hall. Hall now gets it back out top to Radford. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Radford in the corner. Jones open for a three. Too long, however. And the rebound brought down by East Jesmond's Hall. Here's a shot put up, no good. And Kendall comes away with the rebound. JD races to Smiley, to Custer, to Wilson. Baseline, puts it off the glass, too hard, no good. Kaysen Wright rips away the rebound. And now going to the basket is Wilson. His layup is no good, and it will go out of bounds. Last touched by Harrison County. So the thoroughbreds, plenty of chances there, but just couldn't get that ball to fall. Score remains 13-10. We've been stuck on 13-10 now for the last couple of minutes. Minute and a half left to go in the first quarter. With the basketball across the timeline, this time will come Frazier. Frazier dribbles inside the arc, tries a pass, knocked away. Loose ball picked up by Kaysen Wright. Here come the Breds, Wright with the basketball. Gets it to Custard. Custard, ball fake, goes in the paint. A floater from 10 is no good, but he's fouled. And Caden will go to the line for two. Foul is going to be called on Hall. That will be Mikhail Hall's first. Custer going to the line for the first time tonight on the year. An 86% free throw shooter. 12 out of 14. First free throw is perfect. Checking in the game for the first time for Harrison County. Making his very first ever varsity appearance, Damon LaRue. Damon LaRue, a 5'10 junior. Of course, most people will know DeMon by his football prowess. Second free throw is also good by Custard. So with 108 left to go in the first quarter, Harrison County now leads by a score of 15 to 10. DeMon also becomes the 484th player to play a varsity game for Harrison. Ball goes between the legs of Al Cordy, who's into the game. Zade Alcordy, a 5'11 junior for East Jesmond, averaging four and a half points a game. Give the ball back to the Breds. With 51 seconds left on the clock in the first, Will Furnish will check back in. LaRue gets the ball inbounds to Custer. Caden looking, gets the ball on the baseline to look like oh, Garrett Wilson misses the shot. Rebound pulled in by Custer. He has four here in the first quarter. Now a whistle as the ball is entered in to Furnish, and I think a foul is going to be called on East. They just don't have an answer for Furnish. That will be the second foul on Mikhail Hall. They'll bring in Taryn Jackson. Jackson is 6'2", junior for East Jesmond, averaging 6.5 points per game off the bench. 36 seconds on the clock here in the first. Harrison leading 15-10. Wright from his own baseline gets it into Custard to Wright to Wilson. Wilson spins back out top to Custard. Custard in the paint, drops the ball. Loose ball is going to be picked up by East Jesmond. Into the front court we come. That's Radford. Gets it back out top to Al Cordy. Al Cordy into the hands of Radford. Here's a three fired up by Jackson. No good. Long rebound is going to be chased down by Lockett. Right side three. No good by East. And the rebound brought in by Kaysen Wright. Two seconds left. Custard, three at the buzzer, no good. So at the end of one, your score, Harrison County 15, East Jesmond 10. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports.
All righty, back here at the Hilltop. Harrison County up in a low scoring game over East Jesmond, 15 to 10. Well, you know about the Beast Pizza, but don't forget about Snappy's great salads and sandwiches. Just dial 235-7627 right now. That's 235. Snap. Thank you, Ryan. Out of the quarter break, East Jesmond will have the basketball. Trailing by five. Inbounds pass comes to Al Cordy. Al Cordy back near the timeline finds Miles Radford. Radford makes a move to the elbow, kicks it back on the wing to Al Cordy for a three, and it's good. First points of the game for Zach Al Cordy. Gets his team back to within two at 15 to 13. Here's a three fired up by Custer Swish. Another Kanupwa three-pointer fired in by Harrison County, this time by Caden Custer, who extends the lead back out to five, 18 to 13. 7.24 left to go in the first quarter. Here's Lockett with a 10-footer air ball. But coming down with the rebound is Jackson, and Jackson is going to be fouled. Foul is going to be called on Wilson. That will be Wilson's first, sending Taryn Jackson to the line. Jackson, one for one from the line this season. His first free throw here is going to bounce in. His first point of the game as well. Narrows the gap to 18 to 14. Second free throw is going to be in there as well. 18-15, Harrison County's lead back down to three. A minute gone in the second quarter. Custard up top to Wilson on the far side of the circle. We'll drift this way, now pass back to Custard left side. Custard skip pass to LaRue in the corner. DeMond goes to the block, his shot off the glass is no good, but Furnish is there to pick up the garbage and put it back in. Good job that time by Will on the put back. Harrison County has extended the lead back up to five at 20 to 15. 6.48 on the clock. Now a steal by Wilson. Wilson to Custard from the block. Ball fake, goes up, shot good. Oh, nope, they're gonna say the foul is on the floor. So no points there. Foul's gonna be called on Lockett. That'll be Jacob Lockett's first. From his own baseline to trigger the inbounds pass will be Kaysen Wright. Wright in the corner to LaRue. Back to Wright on the block. Wright, baseline pass to Wilson. 12 footer, good. Give the assist to Wright, the points to Wilson. It's Harrison County goes up now. Baseline 22 to 15. Here's a three fired up. Air ball by East Jesamine. And with the rebound, Kaysen Wright. In the front court going to the basket as Custard spins it in for the layup. A good layup there by Caden. Makes the score 24 to 15. We played a couple of minutes of the second quarter. Over on the right side with the basketball, Al Cordy. Al Cordy buzzes into the lane, misses the shot. Rebound, chased down on the opposite side by Kaysen Wright. And into the front court, he'll bring the ball to LaRue on the right side, long range. Skip pass to Custard, ball fake, goes to the baseline, to the block, to the glass, nobody cuts him off, and he lays it up and in. And Coach Tuning, I think, has seen quite enough as he'll call a 30-second timeout. So we'll keep it right here. Five minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the first half, and Harrison County starting to take control as they lead. 26 to 15, and right now they have scored eight consecutive points and seem to be going very well. Well, they've been here for farmers since 1916, and they're here for you now. Farm Credit Mid America, contact Mike Furnish at 859 254 2741 or visit e farmcredit.com. Appreciate Mike's sponsorship of all Harrison County sports. Thoroughbreds coming in 2 0, East Jasmine 0 and 2. Right now, the Thoroughbreds seemingly in control with eight unanswered points to take a 26 15 lead, prompting the timeout by Coach Tuning. Bringing the ball up the floor will be Radford. Radford over on the far side of the circle, hands the ball off to Jones, who's back in the game. Jones looking for help, gets the ball in the paint. Now, here's a locket shot or a pass that's going to be knocked away and stolen by Harrison. 
Kendall coast to coast, lays it up and in. Five points now for J.D. And Harrison County's lead rose to 28 to 15. 5-10 left to go in the first half. Now a shot put up and good by Radford. Miles Radford with his fourth point. Exactly five minutes left to go here in the first half. 28 to 17, Harrison up. Pass over to the far sideline to Custard. Custard gets the ball on the baseline to right. A floater is off the flange, no good. Rebound hauled in by Lockett. He'll get the ball now to Radford. Radford crosses the timeline on the far side of the midcourt circle. Now hands it off in between the circles to Jones. Over on the right side to Jackson. A floater on the baseline from 12 is no good. Wilson goes up and gets this rebound. Garrett in the front court lost his balance and lost the ball as well. Up the floor comes Radford. Radford baseline to the basket. Shot off the bottom of the backboard. Rebound pulled down by Kendall. Kendall the right side to Custard. Custard goes baseline to the block. Bounce pass underneath to Wilson who lays it up and in. Garrett Wilson, the recipient of a nice pass, gets his fourth point on the layup, putting Harrison up by 13. Now Kendall steals the ball and gets the easy bucket. So J.D. with points to make it 32 to 17. 347 left to go in the first half. Harrison taking control. Lockett in the paint, puts up a 10-footer that rolls in. So... <laughs> Excuse me. A couple of subs coming in for Harrison County. 3.38 left to go, 32 to 19 the score. Off of that shot by Jacob Lockett. With the basketball, Custard to get at the ball into the hands of Harris. Harris to Wilson, to Custard. Back this side to Harris. Custard, now skip pass to the near side to Smiley. Back up top to Harris. Harris in the paint, scoop shot, no, Kendall put back, yes! J.D. Kendall doing the work on the offensive glass. In Harrison County, up now 34 to 19. Way to go, J.D. 3.03 left to go in the first half. Three-pointer no good. Kendall rebound. Outlet pass to Harris. Misses the shot. But there to back him up, Garrett Wilson, who just scored his sixth point. Garrett with the put back. Makes it 36 to 19 with 2.45 left to go in the first half. Harrison County running away with this thing right now. They are on an 18 to 4 run. In between the circles, Jones. Left side, finds Lockett. Lockett up front. Now tries a pass, it's picked off by Elijah Harris. As he comes up the far sideline, he's gonna be fouled by Lockett. He's just number one. Okay, confirmation of who that foul is on. And stepping in will be Miles Radford for East Jesmond. <laughs> Harrison County will shoot free throws. As we're in the bonus now, it'll be Elijah Harris. Harris one for two from the line this season. Looking for his first points of the night as well. 2.25 left in the first half. Harrison up by 17. First free throw is off the front of the rim, no good. Jackson comes in there to get the rebound. In the front court, Radford long range. Radford being harassed by Harris. Goes to the block, a floater, good. Six points for Miles Radford. Makes it 36 to 21. With a couple of minutes left in the first half. Kendall up top to Harris, left side Custard. Baseline Kendall, turnaround 12 footer, good. JD with 11 points now. Makes it 38 to 21. With a minute 49 left in the first half. In the paint with the basketball, Frazier gets it in the corner. Here's a three tried and an air ball by Michael Anglin, who's in the game. Rebound on the offside, picked up by Custard. 
Anglin, a 5'10 freshman who has yet to score this year. Now a foul is going to be called on East Jesmond's Miles Radford. That will be his second. DeMond LaRue checks back in. Also coming in the game for the first time, Justin Craycraft. Craycraft, a 6'6 junior. Played a game or two last year, I do believe. Look here. But yeah, played two. I was right on it. Mason Smiley at the line on the year. His first free throw attempt is no good on the one and one. On the rebound, we're going to have a foul underneath the basket on Justin Craycraft. That'll be Justin's first. So give the ball back to East Jesmond. Harrison leading 38-21. Radford in the paint, lobs the ball into the stable, which he's not supposed to do. Turnover gives the ball back to Harrison. That's nine turnovers for East. Harrison County's committed just four. 120 left to go in the first half. Harrison in control. Harris across the timeline. Lobs it to LaRue in front of the East Jesmond bench on the baseline to Kendall. Up top to Harris on the wing to LaRue. DeMond in the corner finds Kendall. Kendall drives, baseline pass to the far corner to Smiley. Smiley back up top to Harris. Pass to LaRue to the elbow to Craycraft. Far side Smiley up top Harris. 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Harris gets it back to Smiley on the left side, long range on the baseline to Kendall. Kendall, no look pass to LaRue. LaRue down low to Craycraft. Hook shot, no. And the rebound is going to be brought down by East Jesmond. That was Corbin Smith who got that rebound. 6'2 sophomore. Shot put up, no good. Rebound pulled down by Craycraft. In the front court, Kendall in the corner finds Harris. Harris goes baseline and makes a circus shot. Just kind of threw it up there, and somehow or another, Elijah got that thing to go down. So baseline jumper makes it 40 to 21 with just 11 seconds left here in the first half. Heading to the basket, shot blocked. Rebound pulled down by Smiley. Smiley racing, puts up a three, no. And that is the way the first half will end with your score. Yay, a blowout finally. Harrison County 40, East Jesmond 21. Harrison County owning the second quarter as they took what had been a close game and right now making it uh, close to no doubter, 19 point advantage. We invite you to stay tuned now for our halftime show brought to you by Joe Cochran out at State Farm. We'll go over all the scoring and stats from this first half following this time out. But once again, here at the Riverview Meat Company Tip-Off Classic, your halftime score, Harrison County 40, East Jesmond 21. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports.
All righty, back here at the hilltop, Harrison County in control by a score of 40 to 21. Over the last seven plus minutes of that first half, Harrison County took control of what was at the time just a three point game at 18 to 15 and outscored the Jaguars 22 to six to extend the lead to what is right now the 19 point margin. Take a look at the scoring. First for East Jesmond, they're led by Keelan, Keelan Daniel. He has eight points, including a couple of three pointers. Six points for Miles Radford. Three points on a tray by Zaid Alcorti, who came off the bench. And a couple of points as well for both Jacob Lockett and Taryn Jackson. Also playing but not scoring, Hayden Frazier, Mayo Jones, Micah Anglin, Mikhail Hall, and Corbin Smith. For Harrison County, J.D. Kendall leads the way with 11 points. Also has a team leading six rebounds. Nine points, five boards, four assists for Caden Custard, another day at the office. Seven points for Will Furnish, six for Garrett Wilson. Five for Mason Smiley, and a couple for Elijah Harris. Also playing but not scoring, Kaysen Wright, Damon LaRue, and Justin Craycraft. That's the way the individual numbers look. We'll take a break, come back, and take a look at the team stats following this timeout. But once again, your halftime score, Harrison County 40, East Jesmond 21. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports. All right, let's take a look now at the team stats as they are here in the first half. Harrison County, not lights out, but still pretty darn good as they hit 16 of 32 shots. That's an even 50%. Attempting nine trays, they made three. Meanwhile, East Jasmine having all kinds of trouble, especially inside, as they made just eight of 31 shots. That's 25.8%. They attempted 15 trays, but made only three. Harrison County went to the foul line eight times and made five for 62.5%, while the Jaguars went there twice and made both for 100%. The rebounding battle was won by Harrison County as well, 22 to 12. Five offensive and 17 defensive rebounds for the Breds. They were paced by J.D. Kendall, six. Meanwhile, three offensive and nine defensive rebounds for East Jesmond's 12. They were led by Mayo Jones, who had four rebounds. And the turnover situation is also in favor of Harrison County. The Thoroughbreds only turned the ball over four times in that first half, while East Jesmond turned it over some nine times. So just uh, in every aspect of the game, Harrison County outdoing East Jesmond here tonight, trying to go to 3-0 on the young season. Well, both teams are back out on the floor going through their halftime paces. We invite you to stay tuned as we'll come back for the third quarter handoff right after this timeout. Once again, your halftime score, Harrison County 40, East Jesmond 21. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports.
All righty, back here on the hilltop. The five days or five games of the 2022 Riverview Meat Company Tip-Off Classic is just uh, half away from concluding. And right now, if you're a Harrison County fan, you have to be very pleased as the Thoroughbreds lead 40 to 21 over East Jessamine. Once again, the Breds will not be in action again until next Friday when we'll head up US 27 North to take on the Mustangs of Bishop Brossert. Then on Saturday, we'll be participating in the 9th versus 10th Region Classic over at uh, Bracken County. Harrison County will play 9th Region rival Boone County. That'll be at 6 o'clock next Saturday. Harrison County will get the ball to begin things here in the third quarter as East Jasmine will try to uh, stop what was a pretty darn good little rally for Harrison County. As I said, we said going on a 22-6 to six run to end up the first half. Kendall to the left side to Smiley, back up top to Harris. Harris now drives over to the far side in the paint, spins, gets it to Smiley on the right wing. Smiley backs it back out again, now to the far hash, mark in front of the stable to Harris. Harris to Kendall in the corner, back to Harris on the wing. Harris gets the ball to Custard, <coughs> surveying the East Jesmond defense. He'll now direct some traffic as he goes in between the circles. Continues to drift to the right side, gets to Harris on the right wing. Back up top to Custard once again. Custard lobs the ball down low to Kendall. Reverse layup, good. <coughs> Easy as you please. Harrison County's lead extends to 42 to 21 as we've doubled up the Jaguars here in the early part of the third quarter. Here's a three fired up, no good by East Jesmond. Down with the rebound, Mason Smiley, and he wants to run. Stops at the elbow, jump shot, good. Coast to coast for Mason Smiley after picking up that offensive rebound, or defensive rebound rather, making it 44 to 21. 6.50 left to go in the third quarter. With the basketball, Radford. Here's a lob put up and good, this time by Frazier. First points of the night for Hayden Frazier. On the runner, gets his team back to within 21 at 41 to 23. And now we're gonna have Lockett. Oh, uh, his shoe came untied, so we'll take a moment for him to let him get it tied. It may be difficult to understand everything your teenager is saying, but with Dustin and Amy at Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, at least it's easy to get great insurance. Call them at 859-234-4514. Inbounds pass will come to Radford. Radford's team down 44-23. Goes to the block, but before he can get there, a foul is going to be called on Elijah Harris. That'll be Elijah's first. Cynthia Hardy's wants you to visit them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner on US 27 South. Made from scratch breakfast or made from scratch biscuits, never frozen burgers, and many other great options at Hardy's in Cynthiana. Lock it with the basketball. Gets it over to the far side to Radford. Then to make that uh, Jones. Jones being harassed by Custard behind the back dribble. Goes inside the arc to the block. In the corner finds Lockett open for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. And Furnish comes down with the rebound for the Breds. Going up and making the shot and Fouled will be Elijah Harris, who will have a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. Just a run out that time by Elijah. 46-23. 5.57 on the clock. Elijah 0 for 1 from the line today. His free throw is good as the old-fashioned three-point play is converted. Harrison County's lead grows to 47 to 23. Well, after those two barn burners in our first two games, this is kind of nice. Blowout victory. Radford with the basketball. In the corner finds Lockett for a three-point try. Off the flange, no good. Rebound is going to be brought down by Custard, who is going to be flattened as he comes up the floor. That foul is on Daniel, I believe. That will be his third. Harrison County comfortably up. Five and a half left to go in the third quarter. Custer with the basketball on the right side. Lobs it down lower. Tried to Kendall, but then the ball caroms into Furnish's hands. And Furnish puts it up and in. And now we're going to have a timeout by East Jesmond. 
528 left in the third, your score, Harrison County 49, East Jasmine 23. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports. All right, out of the timeout. A shot put up no good by H. Jesmond. Furnish with the rebound. With the basketball in the front court is Harris. He'll get it to the elbow to Custard. Lobs it to Furnish. And Furnish is going to be sandwiched and fouled. So he became between Lockett and Daniel. It's going to be called on Lockett, and that'll be Jacob Lockett's third. If you're fed up, call Knup. Knup Law promises to treat you with care, respect, and dignity in whatever legal situation you're in. Visit them at canuplaw.com. Coming into the game will be Mikhail Hall for East. He saw several minutes of action in that first half. Inbounds pass comes from Smiley to Custard. The three-pointer is no good. And coming down with the rebound is Daniel. Up the floor come the Jaguars down 49 to 23. In the paint, Jones gets it over on the near side to Hall. Hall's shot put up by Daniel, blocked by Furnish, but Daniel... Gets the rebound, goes down low again, and this time it's going to be fouled by Kendall. BJD's first, the bass as well. He now has 10 points. First trip to the line tonight for Daniel. Free throw by the sophomore is on the way and good. So he gets the old fashioned three point play. Making it yeah, 49 to 26. <clears throat> Custer gets the ball to Harris to the right side to Smiley. Back up top to Harris to the left side finds Custer. Down the baseline to Kendall. Up top to Smiley. Left side Custer on baseline Kendall. 12 footer bounces off. No good. Rebound. Furnish puts it back up and in. Will with some more strong work on the offensive glass. Puts Harrison County up after the putback. 51 to 26. Now a steal by Smiley. And as he tries to get the ball to Harris, it's going to be knocked out of bounds by Frazier. Harrison County will maintain possession. Each team with just one turnover here in the third quarter. We're at the 354 mark. From his own baseline, Smiley to trigger the inbounds pass. Lobs it on the wing to Custard. And as Custard tried to return the ball to Smiley, Smiley had already left the premises. So the ball goes harmlessly out of bounds, gives the ball back to East Jessamine. Like a good neighbor, Joe Cochran with State Farm is there. Get a new home or auto quote with Joe by calling 859-234-3813. Joe always supports the Bres and Phillies. Here's a three fired up by Jones. No good. And Smiley comes away with the rebound. Right side, Harris. Fakes the three, lobs to the near side to Custard. Custard goes down to the block, now circles back around onto the wing in front of his own bench. He'll get it back down on the block to Furnish. Furnish double team, gets the ball to Custard. Custard fires the ball up top to Harris in the corner. Kendall down low to Furnish, hook shot, rolls off. And the rebound pulled down by Daniel. <clears throat> 3.08 left to go in the third, Harris up by 25. Over on the left side, Frazier long range. He'll get the ball between the circles to Radford. Radford in the corner. Here's a three by Frazier. No good. And Kendall will come away with the rebound. Kendall gets the ball down low to the basket and lays it in. 15 points now for J.D. So he's having another good night tonight. 53, <coughs> excuse me, to 26. 2.37 left. 
And now another turnover by East Jesmyn turns into points on the other side by Caden Custard. Custard extends the lead to 55 to 26. 2.22 left in the third quarter. With the basketball, Jones up top. Here's a three fired up, no good by Daniel. And Kendall, once again, is there for the rebound. He has eight tonight. In the front court, a floater by Smiley, no good. Furnishes put back is also no good. And coming down with the rebound this time is Mikhail Hall. In the front court, right side, Bradford long range. Stops at the top of the key. And now we're going to have an illegal screen set by Keelan Daniel for his third personal foul. Taryn Jackson returns to the floor, as does Micah Anglin. Both those guys saw some action in the first half. Well, you know about the Beast Pizza, but don't forget about Snappy's Great Salads and Sandwiches. Just dial 235-7627 right now. That's 235. Snap. Thank you, Ryan. Custard with the basketball. Skip pass to the far side to Harris. Fires a three-point try. Barely grazes to the rim. And coming down with the rebound is Radford. Radford goes coast to coast and lays it up and in. Miles Radford with his eighth point. But still his team trailing 55 to 28. 124 left in the third. Smiley up top to Harris to the right side to Custard. Skip pass to the near corner to Smiley. Pulls up for a three, short. Rebound on the ground is gonna be picked up by Taryn Jackson. Jackson's third rebound of the night. He'll get the ball to Radford into the front court as we approach a minute to go in the third quarter. Radford in the corner. Now a runner put up no good by Frazier. Offside rebound pulled in by Custard. Custard, skip pass to the far side to Smiley in front of the stable down in the paint to Furnish. Furnish double team trying to get his way out of there and now drops the ball out of bounds. Only the third turnover of the second half for Harrison and only the seventh in the game overall. East Jesmond has committed 11. 43 seconds left to go in the third. Harrison County leading 55 to 28. Cross timeline comes Radford. Radford looks over to Coach Tuning. He's just in the catcher's position right now. Watching Radford dribble up top. Radford splits the defense, goes to the glass. His shot's no good. Kendall has got the rebound for the Thoroughbreds. Here's a pass down low to Custard, who puts it up and in. 13 points for Caden. After the layup, makes it 57 to 28 with just eight seconds left to go. And now a steal by Custard. But as he comes out of there, he's going to be fouled by Anglin. It'll be Anglin's first. Five seconds left in the third quarter. Should be plenty of time for Harrison to get off a decent shot. From the far sideline near the stripe, Custard inbounds the ball to Harris. Harris back to Custard. Custard to the basket. Layup is no good as the buzzer sounds. So at the end of three, your score, Harrison County 57, East Jasmine 28. You're listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports. All right, as we begin the fourth quarter, Harrison County leading by a comfortable 29-point margin. In that third quarter, they outscored East Jasmine 17-7. to 
They've been here for farmers since 1916, and they're here for you now. Farm Credit Mid America. Contact Mike Furnish at 859 254 2741 or visit e farmcredit.com. Now, a discussion between one of the officials and Harrison County Athletic Director Brad Allison about something. Oh, you acted like you knew what the reason for that the conversation oh, was. I'm uh, pretty sure it was uh, students over here. Oh. I think Brad's making his way down there. I see. Maybe getting a little unruly. So I think that must be the case as Brad has gone over to tell him basically calm down. Or else I'll have to ask you to leave. Or words to that effect. We'll get somebody on that part of our crack staff. All right, East Jesmyn with the basketball. Up top with it is Radford. Now kicks it in the corner to Frazier. Frazier back to Radford in the corner. Back on the wing now to Anglin. He'll fire a three, short. Long rebound, comes all the way out to Radford. Radford to the foul line to Jackson. His jump shot there, no good. This time, Elijah Harris has the board. Harris to Wilson, who's in the game now. Wilson in the paint's gonna be fouled by Frazier going for the steal, and that'll be a couple of fouls on Hayden Frazier. Cynthia Hardy's wants you to visit them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner on US 27 South. Made from scratch biscuits, never frozen burgers, and many other great options at Hardy's in Cynthiana. From his own baseline, Kaysen Wright gets the ball inbounds to Wilson, who puts it up, and it rolls off. Rebound pulled in by Anglin. In the front court with the basketball, Frazier. Gets it to Anglin in the corner for three. No good too long. And DeMond LaRue gets the offside rebound. And bring the ball into the front court. Harris with the basketball. His team leading 57-28. We've played a minute, gone in the fourth quarter. Harrison's been comfortably ahead since midway through the second quarter. Furnish to the right side to right to LaRue in the corner. Back to right. Now inside the center of the circle to, to uh, Harris. Harris to Wilson. Wilson back up top to Harris to the far side to right long range. Kaysen brings the ball out front himself inside the center circle. Now a pass to the near sideline to Harris. Harris back to right, right over on the far side to LaRue to the elbow to Furnish, ball knocked away and the loose ball picked up by East Jesamine. In the front court going all the way and laying it up and in is Frazier. Good draw that time by Hayden Frazier. On the steal and layup. Makes it 57 to 30 with 621 left on the clock. Harris with the basketball in the front court. Lobs it on the wing to Wilson. Wilson goes baseline, falls down, looking for help, gets the ball to LaRue. DeMond, skip pass to right. Right inside the arc, goes to the block, and as he goes up for a shot, looks like he's going to be fouled by Radford. Actually, it's going to be on Anglin. That'll be Micah Anglin's second personal foul. Kaysen right going to the line. This will be Kaysen's first free throws of the season. So he looks for his first points of the year as well. First one's on the way and perfect. There you go, Kaysen. 58 to 30. 6.06 on the clock. And the second free throw is also good by Wright. 59 to 30, your score now. And a three is good by East Jesmond. Three point pass for Mikhail Hall. By Mikhail Hall, Hall's first points of the ball game. Makes it 59 to 33. With 540 left on the clock. Out top of the basketball is Harris. Elijah wraparound pass on the wing to LaRue. Now to the top of the key to Wilson. And then Wilson drops it out of bounds. Craycraft returns for Harrison County, giving Will Furnish a well-deserved rest. Will with 11 points tonight and six rebounds. If we can get that kind of average from Will all the time, I'll be happy. With the basketball, Radford in the front court. His team down by 26. Gives the ball to Frazier, up top to Anglin. Anglin in the paint, a floater, good. Micah Anglin's first points makes it 59 to 35. Harris to Wilson. Wilson 
with 5.04 on the clock. Gets the ball in the paint to Craycraft. He wasn't quite expecting it. He'll now flash it back outside to Wilson. Wilson at the elbow, goes to the block, scoop shot, no good. Craycraft rebound, his put back is no good, but thinks that Justin is going to be fouled. Craycraft going to the line for the first time this season. First one's on the way and no good. He'll have another chance at it, however. 4.49 left, Harrison leading 59 to 35. And we'll go to 3 0 on the year while East will drop to 0 3. Second free throw is good by Craycraft. Jake with. Makes it 60 to 35 with just 4.42 left. Radford in the paint. A hook shot's no good, but he's fouled by Elijah Harris and will go to the line. Radford's first trip to the line tonight. Came in averaging eight. That's exactly how many points he has right now. Trying to become the first East Jasmine Jaguar to hit double figures. First one's on the way and good. He'll have another. 60 to 36 is now the score. Second free throw on the way, and this one is good as well. Makes it 60 37. With the basketball, LaRue in the front court. Lobs it at the foul line to Craycraft. Craycraft lost control of the basketball, now regains it and gets it into the hands of Casey right inside the center circle. Right, wrap around pass to LaRue at the far hash mark. LaRue inside the arc, gets it on the baseline to Wilson. Wilson to Craycraft from the block, but the ball is going to be knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. If you're fed up, call Canup. Canup Law promises to treat you with care, respect, and dignity in whatever legal situation you're in. Visit them at canuplaw.com. Inbounds pass comes to Harris in between the circles. Pass to the right side to right in front of the stable. Right now backs up, and we're going to have a charging foul on Case and Wright. So give the ball back to the Jaguars. Into the front court with the basketball, Radford. He's had a busy day. Tries to split the defense and drops the ball. Loose ball picked up by Harris and counties right. Right in the corner to, to uh, Harris. Harris lobs the ball to the top of the key to right. Over on the far corner, a three by LaRue is no good. Rebound on the offside is going to be picked up by Anglin, I believe it was. Now a Euro step by Wright is missed and coming down with the rebound are the Jaguars. Shot on that side is missed and Craycraft gets the rebound. In the front court with the basketball right. Pass through the far side to LaRue. LaRue skip pass to the near side to right. Right on the baseline to Wilson. Turnaround jumper, good. Garrett Wilson with eight points now. Makes it 62 to 37, 315 left. Harrison County comfortably up. Radford goes to the basket. His layup is too hard off the glass. Rebound pulled in by Wilson. Wilson tries to get inside and drops the ball. Loose ball picked up. And on a snowbird on the other end of the floor, Radford lays it in. He now has a dozen points, 62 to 39, under three to go. A couple of subs set to check in for Harrison County. Across the timeline comes Harris, and a timeout called by Harrison County. And I think it mainly is just to get some guys in. It's going to be just a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Mark it down. 2.43 left. Harrison County up 62 to 39. And a good win. Wasn't perfect. Lots of stuff to work on, but a lot of good stuff. And a lot of people very active tonight as far as assists and rebounds are concerned and just overall solid defensive play. Jack Nitton will be one of those that will be checking in. Also checking in, Maddox Williams. Maddox Williams, a 6'2 senior. Inbound.
bounce pass will come to Midden. Bounce pass on the far side to LaRue. LaRue back up top now to the near side to right long range. Two and a half minutes left, Harrison up 62 to 39. Here's a pass intended for Williams, knocked away, and as LaRue tries to go get it, just beyond his outstretched hand. So give the ball back to the Jags. Game was close for about a quarter. In between the circles is Camonte Braxton. There's a three fired up, no good. And the rebound comes out to number four. That's James Burbage who's in the game now. With the basketball now is Anglin. Here's a three that is no good. Rebound bounced around and coming away with it is Williams. Good job by Maddox. How then Every then throws the ball away. Shot is missed though and Damon LaRue comes down with the rebound. In the front court right to LaRue. LaRue to the block, to the glass. Shot no good. Rebound fought for and goes out of bounds. I'm going to say it was last touched by East Jessamine. 62-39, Harrison leads. 1.33 left. Goes on baseline, case and right to trigger the inbounds pass. Backs up near the center circle. It's Harrison County about to go to the 3-0 on the year. LaRue up top to right. Back to LaRue on the left side. LaRue skipped past the far side. Now a pass inside to Williams, goes to the basket, gets to Craycraft. Craycraft pitches it back out top to reset the offense. LaRue on the left side, steps inside the arc. Now gets the ball into Williams in the paint, goes up, shot no good. Rebound is being looked for and finally corralled by Kaysen Wright, who has five rebounds tonight. LaRue to Williams. Williams in the paint. Up top to mid for three, no. Rebound bounced around, Craycraft has it. His shot's no good, gets his own rebound. As he tries to go back up with it a second time, he's gonna be fouled. Foul is on Corbin Smith, that'll be his first. So Craycraft at the line where he's one for two tonight. 44 seconds on the clock. First free throw is good. Makes it 63 to 39. Second free throw by the junior. Is up and this one is no good. Long rebound picked up by Craycraft. Can't make the shot. And now coming up the floor is Anglin who misses his opportunity. And the ensuing rebound brought down by LaRue. In the front court, a pass intended for Wright is a little too tall, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds by an East Jasmine Jaguar. Just 23 seconds left, Harrison leading 63-39. From the far corner right, inbounds the ball to Williams. To the near side to LaRue. LaRue fires a three off the flange, no good. And coming down with the rebound is Burbage. Burbage misses the shot. Rebound is picked up by Burbage, no good. Another shot, no good. Rebound picked up by Craycraft. And that is the way the ball game will end. With your score, Harrison County 63, East Jessamine 39. Harrison County improves now on the season to a perfect 3-0, while East Jessamine remains winless at 0-3. Good win. We invite you to stay tuned with us as we'll have our post-game show. We'll talk about all the stats and numbers, talk to Coach Brooks, and also name our Judy Construction Company player of the game. All that coming up after this timeout. But once again, your final score here in the fifth and final game of the day in the Riverview meets Tim Hall Classic. Harrison County 63, East Jasmine 39. You've been listening to Thoroughbred Basketball on WCYN Sports.